What's going on everybody? Uh, welcome to August 3rd's end of day video 2021. Now I think I worked on about four vehicles today. I also did a little experimenting in the field with a couple different uh, tools and also some experimenting here on my 555 demonstration board. Now I got to tell you, I get excited when I learn something. It really uh, inspires me to keep on going and then I realize how much I don't know. So just a little while ago, I was working on this demonstration board right here. And as I was working on it, I had some issues. Um, right here we have three 555 timers set up. Uh, these are the three modes of operation for the 555 timer. We have uh, a stable mode, which is just on and off, on and off. We have bi stable, which means when we turn this button on, it'll stay on. That is uh, indefinitely. As long as we have power, this will stay on until we turn it off. Uh, that's going through to the threshold and the trigger inputs of the 5.5 time, five timer. So as you see, that's how that works, on, off. And then we also have uh, mono stable, which is a one-shot timer. So if you look at this, when I hit the button on, it stays on for a certain period of time, and then it'll turn off, and then I can go ahead and do it again, and it'll stay on, and then it'll go off. Uh, over and over again. This doesn't change. This happens over and over and that's just the way it is. Now when I built this project all three modes on one breadboard I had a little issue. So you see this is working just like it was before. On, off, on, off. Well let me hit this button. Well I thought I was supposed to stay on all the time and it's not. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This one should be the one shot timer and it goes on all the time and then about three seconds and it should turn off. But nope, it's just flashing kind of. And what, note when I hit this button, this one will get messed up. What is going on here? Well, I found out, I'll tell you a secret, I found out, found out that adding a small 10 nanofarad capacitor to my power supply fixes everything right up. And if you didn't see it before, I snuck that out of here when you weren't looking. So this is working properly, okay? Everything is working the way it should here. No problems. This one will stay on indefinitely. This one will go on for about two and a half, three seconds. All is well. I want to share with you guys what I found here uh, on a scope. So let's take a look at our Pico scope here. And I want you to see that I'm going to hook up uh, the output uh, or the input to the scope. Channel B, the red lead, is going to go on to the uh, positive of this of this circuit here so or the feed of this LED so when that's on you can see it's on and you should be able to see that turn on and off on a scope let's go ahead and <clears throat> put a trigger on here triggers make everything easier I'm gonna put a trigger to repeat and check this out when I hit this button everything's working the way it should it stays on for a period of time and goes off now watch what happens if I take that capacitor out I hit that button, look at this blue line here is our power supply. This is our power voltage, okay? Let me drag this down. And I want you to see with this capacitor out, let me do it one more time. You can see I'm doing it over and over again. With that capacitor out, if I zoom in here, you can see we're dropping right at that point. We're dropping, I'd say, below at this point. We're dropping the voltage way down here I'd have to say we're dropping uh, a nominal voltage of about 2.956 volts for about 79 nanoseconds okay now the beautiful thing with the trigger on, on PicoScope and other scopes in this instance I'm gonna put the capacitor back in between positive and negative here let me hit this again watch what happens now do you see the big difference you can see here on a screen there's a huge difference in our uh, voltage drop in our power supply when I hit that button I'm going to hit this over and over a few times. The scope is running so you can see that pattern is changing. And let me go ahead and pull that capacitor out. Boom. That's without the capacitor in there. I got to be honest with you. I thought that was really cool when I found that out. I found it out by messing around and kind of seeing stuff, but I didn't catch it on a scope. When I caught it on a scope, that made my day. So anyhow, getting on to today... The first vehicle of the day was a vehicle I decided to walk away from. I hate to say it like that, but the vehicle had so many problems and was so butchered up from before that I decided not to work on it. Um, some may frown upon this, 
but that's okay. The doors were literally falling off the vehicle. Somebody jumpered a neutral safety switch so it'd start in any gear. There's all kinds of hack wiring jobs all over this thing. I feel bad for the owner because they've put a lot of time and effort into it over the years or whatever. They've owned it for a long time, but I just can't help them out with that. That's not something I'm interested in doing. So I bowed out of that. I gave an initial inspection time trip fee for free and didn't charge anything and bowed out. Next, we went to a 2011 Jeep Liberty, and this was a straightforward, easy, use computer job. Just like you've seen my other videos on YouTube, make sure you check them out. Uh, we just basically had the original computer with a proper calibration ID. Uh, we were able to pull off that and act like we're going to program that one and hot swap the other one. When I say hot swap, we do turn the key off and then put the new computer in, turn the key on, program it. It was all set. Uh, customer got the PIN code, so we did a security like that. It was a gravy job, no problem. Next, I did a 2006 uh, E250, uh, I'm sorry, F250, and that was just a straight up uh, used computer programming. Very simple, no security or pats to deal with on that one either. Now, my final job of the day was an interesting one, I gotta tell you. It was uh, uh, no start, no crank, no start. I was told it was a communication issue. So I kind of had that in my head as I rolled up on site. This was a brand new customer that kind of thought my prices might have been a little high off the get-go, and that's okay. I'm not worried about it, but I just want to show to him that, hey, I know what I'm doing. I'm fast and efficient about it, and I got my breakout box out right away, checked pin 6 and 14, and we did have 63 ohms of resistance. Uh, and then I, at that point, I figured I got the U-scope handy. This stuff's kind of on the top of my tool bag even before I get my computer out. So I just checked the uh, CAN bus, and CAN high and low look like garbage on this thing. But we still have to do a complete vehicle DTC scan and see what's up. Turned out only the theft deterrent module is not communicating. Look at this CAN bus, man. This is bad. But the theft deterrent module was not communicating due to a blown fuse. Put the fuse in there, vehicle started up, and a CAN bus still looked like garbage. But, hey, they were happy. I think this thing probably has another corroded module on it, causing all kinds of issues. Maybe it'll be a problem in the future. Maybe it won't. But in a nutshell, that was my day. I hope you guys enjoy these videos. Let me know if you get something out of it. If you want to know more about this type of work right here, the 555, I'm working on some videos that I'm going to post, some to YouTube and also some more in-depth stuff to the uh, membership site. Be sure to check it out. If you want to learn more about electronics, get yourself some components. You could spend 30 bucks on some ICs, resistors, capacitors, some inductors, a couple other pieces of parts, some diodes, and you can have a good time and learn a lot. You guys take it easy. Have a great day.